The Microsoft Whiteboard can be used in Microsoft Teams to collaborate during a Teams meeting. It can be installed on a Windows PC through the application version, or you can run it through a web browser using the web-based version. Now you might wonder whether there are actually different versions of the Microsoft Whiteboard, because over time it's become a very consistent experience between all three places that you can use it. However, in this video I'll show you how the web version is the one that you're probably going to want to use if you want to have the best whiteboard experience at this point in time, and there are some very important reasons why that's the case. There are three different versions of the Microsoft Whiteboard. To be technically accurate and to be fair, I think maybe we can't really call them different versions of the Microsoft Whiteboard. I think it's probably best to refer them as different variations of the Microsoft Whiteboard. And really those variations are functional use variations. So for example, I have the Whiteboard application. This is something that I installed on my Windows 11 PC and I'm using it as I would any other application in my environment. That being being said, there are certain things I cannot do with this application that you would expect to be able to do with regular applications you install, specifically around things like file management. But with this particular whiteboard, I can go in and I can use the create menu, I can use the inking menu, and I have some settings that I can use. The other variation is the web-based variation. Now you can see I've switched to a web browser, I've gone to whiteboard.office.com, I've logged in with my office account, you could be an organizational account in this case, or it could be a school account. Now in this case the whiteboard is part of the office suite. In fact if you drop down the tile menu here you can see all the different office applications there of which whiteboard is one of them. So here same thing I can create, I can ink, and I have different settings that I have there as well. Now the other uh, variation is available to me in a Teams meeting. Now in a Teams meeting if I go to the share menu and I go to the whiteboard, so I'm going to click on the whiteboard, it's going to go in, I'll just close that down, let's try that again, we'll share and we'll go to Microsoft whiteboard, so it's going to open up a whiteboard that I can use to collaborate with others on. Now this is a great tool, I really like it. The challenge I have with this is that if I go in to record this meeting, so I go into start and I'll go into record this meeting. Oh, actually it is recording right now, so we'll stop recording. When I start recording, I'm just gonna start recording again. It's going to give me a warning. And this is a very significant warning that it's going to give me. It's going to say, we'll go back to chat here so we don't have the transcript. Underneath the warning, the use of this app will not be recorded, which means that anything that I'm putting onto the whiteboard here in Teams is not going to be part of any recording that I create for this meeting. So if I'm with students and I'm building up concepts, for example, let's say I'll do this and then do this, and it's important for them to see the process that I'm using in order to create this recording or create this whiteboard, then that process will not be captured. It'll just be me talking in the recording and all you'll have is the audio. You won't see the whiteboard. The nice thing about the whiteboard in Teams though is that I can go in here and other participants that are in my Teams meeting can edit and work with me on the whiteboard simply by flipping this little switch here. It's very easy to do. So it is a great solution if I'm not concerned about the process of creating the whiteboard and capturing that in a recording, but if I only care about the end product of the whiteboard, once we're done we can export it and that can become an artifact in my Teams. Now when I go to the web-based version, I can share that as well. So you'll notice underneath the gear there's no option here to allow others to participate because I'm the only one on this web page. But I can invite others into this whiteboard by clicking the share icon and then that'll give me the opportunity to invite people that can come in and edit the whiteboard. So you can do it at the same time because of live elements so you can have collaborative cursors where you'll see the name of others that are participating. You can do the same with the application one because it really is, again, not a version, it's a variation. So what's really happening here is this is just the application. It's sitting on top of the whiteboard that's running in my Office 365, sorry, my Microsoft 365 environment, which includes the whiteboard application. So notice I can invite others into this as well, and I can also set it up for collaborative cursors. So you might say, okay, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. They're, they're all the same interface. They all have, you know, generally the same functionality. Well, here's why I prefer the web application over the other two at this point in time. 
First of all, here on the, on the desktop application, I don't really have any file management ability here. Now I do have another video on the channel where I show you that by going into the administrative settings of Microsoft 365, I can enable features that will allow my whiteboards to be saved to my OneDrive. So when I create a one, when I create a whiteboard, these all get saved. Any new whiteboard I've been creating for the past few days is being saved to my OneDrive. I can do things like create folders in here and organize the OneDrive uh, <clears throat> environment. I get all the additional functionality. You can go and check out that video if you're interested in seeing that. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the OneDrive now that I have it saved to OneDrive. This will save it, the application will save it to OneDrive, but there's no real way for me to go and open up the whiteboard through the OneDrive environment. I can go to the home button here and I can search for the OneDrive or for the whiteboards. I can search for the different ones that are there and it'll show from most recently used to last recently used. And no, you can't go in and uh, choose a older whiteboard and save it to OneDrive. It's only for new whiteboards that you can save to OneDrive once you enable that administrative feature. So that's great. I mean, I do like the, the desktop version of, but I get the exact same functionality here in the web version, except with the web version, if I were to go into my OneDrive and choose one of my other whiteboards, so let's take a, the biology whiteboard, it will automatically kick me to a tab in my browser and it will allow me to open up the whiteboard. So it's going to open up that whiteboard. I'm going to be able to make changes to it. I'm going to be able to, you know, add notes to it, whatever I want to do with this particular whiteboard. So you can see that it's going to be a very similar experience to any of the whiteboard, but this one here, in my opinion, just interacts much nicer with the OneDrive environment. And it also allows me to share out and, it, you know, it's just fine. The other big benefit of using a web browser is that I can also use my Mac. Here on my Mac, you can see all the whiteboards that I had in my Windows environment are here because they're all stored in the cloud. Now, in my case, any new whiteboards are being stored on OneDrive. So I could open up a whiteboard. I could create a new whiteboard. If I go to my OneDrive folder and grab one of these whiteboards, it'll open it up. You can see I've got the same whiteboard here. I can collaborate on it. I can share it out. I can still share it out with others in my organization. And I have the ability to do all the things that I want to do with the whiteboard uh, on any system that I have. I can even use my iPad to go onto the one to the whiteboard, which gives me that touch screen or my Surface. I use my Surface quite a bit as well. Although I could install the application variation on my Surface, I do have that. But the point being is that if I have some other device with a touch screen, or if I have some other device besides a Windows machine, I don't have to install the app. I can just use the web-based interface. Which brings me to the Teams one. The Teams one is great for collaboration in a Teams meeting. Once they resolve the issue of this being recorded, as part of the presentation, then this will be just one of my options as well. So for example, if I have a team meeting and we all want to collaborate, then it's easier for me to just click that share button. I'll just stop presenting this here. It's easier for me to click the share button and then go into the whiteboard. Right now what I do is I'll click the share button and rather than go into the whiteboard, I'll actually choose the window where I actually have my web-based variation of the whiteboard. All my participants are now seeing this, so they can all see this. So if I'm presenting concepts that build upon each other, this will also be part of the recording of the meeting. If I want them to participate, I would have to go and share it from here. So you kind of have to balance those two variations against each other for the specific functional thing that you're trying to do at that point in time. So if you're trying to collaborate with a concern for the end product, use the built-in whiteboard. If you're trying to demonstrate a concept on build a solution and want that recorded as part of your lecture, then use a shared window and share the web-based version. So as you can see, the inability to record the whiteboard in the Teams meeting is a big issue if you're building up a concept. You can see that the application has issues around how I can work with the whiteboards, copying them and working with them in that environment. So the web-based version is going to give me the most flexibility and it's the one that I really do recommend that people work with at this point in time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in more topics around Microsoft Whiteboard, I have a number of videos here on the channel about them, and I have a whole bunch of videos about how we can use technology to learn and teach better. If you like that sort of thing, you can subscribe, comment on this video, like this video, and share with others if you want to help out the channel, because that really does help out the channel. And most of all, thank you so much for watching.